Hi everybody, Beanmeister22 here. Hey, today we're going to look at a couple of sights and sounds from our Big Island Hawaii trip and something in particular that I think is really cool and if you guys know me, you'll know why. Look at we have a naturally growing coffee plant. Coffee plant, coffee tree. There's coffee beans growing it. You guys know how much I, you know, like coffee and I drink Kona coffee. And something about Kona coffee, which some of you may or may not know. If you're not familiar with Kona coffee, it comes from Hawaii. There are some specific things, or definitions, or attributes that it has to have to be actual Kona coffee. But if you'll see something labeled as Kona coffee, it might only have 10% Kona coffee and 90% just, you know, regular old coffee or junk coffee or, or it could be good coffee. But in order to call it Kona coffee it has to have at least 10% Kona coffee in it. And you're saying 10%? Yes, one-tenth. So if you have a glass and it is filled 90%, nine-tenths with Diet Pepsi, and you put 10%, one-tenth of Diet Coke in there, are you going to taste a Diet Coke? Probably not. Sometimes it will be listed as a Kona coffee blend, but... Other times it'll just say Kona coffee. Then you look at the small print, it'll say with 10% Kona coffee in here and 90%, you know, Arabica beans from, I don't know, Guatemala or wherever that comes from. So the only way to be 100% sure that it is 100% Kona coffee is it'll say right there in the label and it won't be small. It'll say it big. It'll say 100% Kona coffee or maybe 40% or 50%. But if they have more than 10% Kona coffee in there, they brag about the fact of having 100% or having a lot more. So if it just says Kona coffee, look at the fine print because it probably is only 10% Kona coffee. Now with that said, it doesn't mean it's not a good tasting coffee because I really love that Amazon Kona coffee and it's only 10% because 100% Kona coffee is considerably more expensive. But yeah, I really do like that. Amazon Kona coffee slash Kona coffee blend. I like the way it tastes. And that's why you drink coffee, because you like the way it tastes, right? All right, so enjoy the video. I dump on this because it's heavy. I, I do it on the rack. <laughs> wow.
You gotta run jump it. Where do you swim? Over up here than it was before. <laughs> All right, so what do you guys think? Have you ever been to Hawaii? Have you ever been to the Big Island? You guys know the Big Island is not my fave. Maui is not my fave. I really like Oahu because Oahu has a little bit of everything from the good beaches to the big city to the jungles to the plantations where the other islands just they don't have everything. They just have, you know, some things. All right, so if you've never been to Hawaii, consider it. Depending on where you live, it's not that expensive and not that far a trip. If you're on the west coast of the U.S., you can get to Hawaii in five or six hours. It doesn't take that long, and it's very reasonably priced. Depending on the airline, you can get a low-cost round-trip ticket for under $400. Now, you know, I don't fly low-cost. <laughs> I fly a little more expensive, but even, you know, with a... Alaska Airlines that I prefer to fly, even a first class ticket round trip can be as low as $750 or you know as much as $1,300 or $1,400. It's like anything else. When it's a time of year and when you're going and the day of the week and the time of day. I've said this before. I've gone online. I've said, oh, I want to go on this day. And I look, oh man, it costs $1,200 to fly round trip. And then you look the next day, oh, it's only $875 to fly round trip. I'm going to leave the next day. And a little quick travel secret here, it is generally the least expensive day to fly is Sunday. I don't know why, but, but it is. All right, so leave your comments in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. Beanmeister 22, the most dangerous man on YouTube.